Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. I was in the middle of making a new video about 5 upcoming RPGs that you probably never heard about, which is a new series of videos that you can watch on this channel. And while searching for potentially good role-playing games of all types, I stumbled upon a really interesting project. First of all, I have to warn you that this whole project is on Japanese, and I used Google Translate to gather all the available information about this game, so I'll probably get something wrong in translation. That doesn't matter a lot, because a picture is worth a thousand words. Before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor. Fishing Clash is a free-to-play fishing game available for Android and iOS devices. This game is a combination of a fishing simulator, outdoor fishing features and competitive PvP modes, taking the best features from all of them. You can play this game as a relaxing fishing simulator, but you can also be very competitive. Fishing Clash has plenty of PvP game modes like challenges, tournaments and skirmishes. There is even a battle royale mode where you can play with up to 8 people to catch the highest pointed fish on a given fishing spot. But the icing on the cake when it comes to PvP modes is Clan Wars. You can join a fishing clan or even create one to compete in Clan Wars. There are hundreds of different fish species to catch like carps, bases, catfishes, but not those from Tinder, the real catfishes. Yeah, anyway. You have a dozen of different fisheries to visit like Florida Coast, Kenai River and soon you'll be able to visit Amazon and Nile River as well. Either spring, summer or winter, you can visit the nearest river, lake, sea or an ocean whenever you want. You can collect and upgrade fishing rods, lures and other fishing equipment so you can catch bigger fish. This game has daily and weekly events as well. You can climb on top of the leaderboards by catching sharks and other sea monsters. Download Fishing Clash for free by using my link in the description and support the channel. I covered a bunch of indie games which are being developed in Unreal Engine, but I never saw anything close to this quality. I'm speaking specifically about the action combat in this project and everything that's related to it. The animations are pretty much something that you would expect to see in a AAA RPG from a huge studio. If not even better to be honest, and I'm pretty sure you can see why I think like that. I don't know the technical terms because I'm obviously not a developer, but the transition between animations is also top quality. It makes every move smooth like butter in this prototype or the test version of the game or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. There is a video on this channel called I'm Addicted to Motion Blending and Moving, which actually explains a lot when it comes to the quality of animations. I know a lot of people can be sensitive to bad animations in action RPGs, judging by my comment section at least. This guy definitely knows how to make top quality animations, which is a huge part of what makes the action combat feel good. But it's not just the animations. Just by watching these fight scenes, we can notice how impactful the combat seems. It looks like it has a really good amount of weight behind every hit, which makes the combat feel impactful. This game is a fantasy RPG and we can also see some magical abilities, which are mixed with melee attacks in combat. And once again, it all flows so seamlessly. Besides magic, we can also see how the player uses the bow in the middle of combat, which also looks pretty damn good. The developer is really active on YouTube, he uploads new videos on a regular basis. In one of the videos, we can see the variety of different melee weapon types and how they work in combat, and if you understand Japanese, you can obviously get a lot more info from his videos. Dark Souls, Monster Hunter and For Honor are the games that inspire this developer and it's not hard to see that. A lot of indie developers like to mention these famous games as an inspiration, usually just because it's good for marketing. But the action combat in this game truly looks like it borrows a lot of ideas from a bunch of different games. And this developer is obviously talented enough to turn those ideas into actual mechanics. Regardless of what he uses as an inspiration, the action in this game looks amazing, even in these early stages of development. Speaking of mechanics, in the description of the video he mentions stance mode a lot. So that kinda reminds me of Neo games and Sekiro, so I'm guessing there is some of that inspiration as well. In one of the documents for the game he talked about posture point mechanic or PP for short. A deadly blow can be decided during the PP break, PP is reduced by hits, sweet guards, etc. During the battle, fight while recovering PP in stance mode. Full recovery when defeating an enemy or escaping from the battle area. So yeah, this mechanic sounds really similar to Sekiro's posture system. 
I never thought I'm going to say PP multiple times in a sentence, but there you go. When it comes to some other interesting mechanics, he mentioned weapon throwing and weapon transfer. We could actually see the character throwing the weapon in one of the scenes from the trailer. There is a section about a couple of game systems in the same document as well, but just remember that all of this is roughly translated with Google Translates. Anyway, Underground Temple is going to be a place where you can interact with the memories of the past and the future that will germinate, you can rematch with the boss and prepare for the battle. Since you fight in chaos, you can freely change the equipment configuration and characters used, and you can retry immediately even if you die. Judging by that part, it seems like we'll be able to control multiple characters, but it could be just badly translated. And the concept of underground temple sounds like a hub area in the game, something like Firelink Shrine I guess. This same document also provides some information about the world in the game. Medieval European style, so called world of swords and magic, technology level before the industrial revolution which basically means there are no guns in the game. There is magical power called Mei. There is a war between a couple of countries which are not yet named and a lot of Mei come to spring in various parts of the continent. Research on May and competition for production areas accelerated and that turned into a war. You start the game on an island which has been occupied and your goal is to regain the control of the island. Eventually a third force will be involved in the continental war. I have tried my best to make sense from this translation but the idea for the setting here is actually pretty clear. I think the May magic system sounds really interesting and there is a separate explanation for how it actually works. May's natural recovery over time and the state of the earth. Only when you are underground, May emitted from the ground is automatically absorbed from your feet and MP recovers. Recovery speed varies depending on the condition of the ground at your feet. For example, recovery is strong near large trees and it's weak in desert areas. You can see the condition with May's eye. That's an ability we're going to use for checking the state of May. This whole system sounds really immersive and interesting. Your character is basically drawing magical powers from the environment and it kinda makes sense. A lot of RPGs just slap that mana bar on your character without any explanation but not this game. To be honest, calling it a game in this state is probably a bit far fetched. I think the development of this project started in September of last year. So it's been in development for only a couple of months. By the way, this guy claims he got 10 million for the development and naturally my dumbass thought 10 million dollars and I was like that's huge for a small indie developer. But it's actually 10 million yen which is the Japanese currency, surprise surprise. So that translates to almost 100k dollars which is far from a big budget but it's still pretty decent for a small studio. And he's actually going to receive this amount of money on annual basis so that's pretty decent. The Japanese publisher called Kodansha is going to fund this project. Kodansha is a really large publishing company in Japan and it produces the manga magazines. I guess they decided to start funding game projects as well. And that's everything I managed to find about this interesting project. I really wish there is some official information on English and I'm not even sure that the game will be localized on English at all. I hope it will because it looks like it has a ton of potential. And what do you guys think about this project? Tell me your opinions in the comments below. Don't forget to check out Fishing Clash in the description and support the channel by downloading the game. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG contents. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.